Thank you for joining us today. It's a little bit cooler in Atlanta today, but we're glad to have you with us wherever you may happen to be. Uh, this is Bill Baker at Firestorm. We're happy to have this RenWeb sponsored webinar today. This is part of the RenWeb Crisis Coach Series, and we're going to be discussing why assess for schools. This is the eighth in the series. We invite you to become our friend at Facebook. Um, it's Firestorm Solutions on Facebook, Firestorm Soul on Twitter. There is a hashtag for the session, Crisis Coach. Firestorm transforms crisis into value and empowers you to manage risks and crises. Firestorm has expertise in crisis management, critical decision support, crisis communication, crisis public relations, and consequence management. The presentation today is not complete without the accompanying oral comments and discussion. The work product provided must be read and considered in conjunction with advice from your organization's personal counsel. In addition, this information should not be considered legal advice or legal opinion. We're pleased to have RenWeb as our co-sponsor and underwriter of this particular series. This is the Crisis Coach webinar series. It is aimed at friends and uh, customers of the RenWeb organization. How do you know what you don't know? This is a free emergency preparedness webinar for schools. And it's underwritten by our good friends at RenWeb. Uh, Jim, do you want to say some nice things about RenWeb? And I'll be glad to say nice things about Jacqueline, who uh, I think had a conflict that came up at the last moment today. I was fortunate to meet many of you at the RenWeb conference uh, just a couple weeks ago in Atlanta. For those of you who have never attended that event, it's certainly a great opportunity for educators to network with each other and to learn what the uh, challenges that everyone is facing in the schools uh, as we look at the academic year. Uh, RimWeb certainly provides uh, a great technology to be able to manage your business and to make your school operate the way that you need it to uh, in that perspective. My name is Jim Satterfield and I'll be speaking today and we're going to talk about this whole area about assessing plans and trying to figure out what's happening as we go forward. We generally give an update of events that have been occurring and I thought I'd share a story about an event without naming the school. Uh, we got a call this week from uh, a school where a, a, a young man had uh, spoken to another student and said, you're the only person here that likes me, and uh, if it wasn't for you, I would kill everybody at the, the school. And it got referred through the process. It took a week from that report from the student who heard the quote to get to the leadership to take action to figure out through the process. There had also been some anger issues that were associated with it. Uh, this is a vocational school uh, as opposed to a K-12 school as the Rimwood uh, users are. But it shows that the violence threats are here, they're real, and they're occurring every single day. Uh, as we're out of school for the summer and you're making plans for uh, the return to the students either in early August or uh, into September, now's the time to be thinking about all these areas, and I think it makes our assessment uh, conversation today a little bit more critical. As you think about, I would like you to look at this picture. This is a picture taken uh, just a few days ago in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, on the beach, and it's not been photoshopped, it's not been doctored at all. But the thing that's startling I'd like you to look at is look at all the people out on the beach walking, and then as you look up at that cloud formation, it looks very serious. And I think that's an important element for us to think about, that there are dangers out there. There are warning clouds. There are uh, events that are going to occur. And it's recognizing those and acting on those becomes very important. Um, obviously, with the way that those clouds look, lightning strikes are extremely apparent. Uh, there is a significant weather coming in. And at this point in time, we would want our students inside and not outside. So people are not processing the threats 
as they present. And that's an area that I want us to think about today as we talk about assessing where we are in a variety of different areas. Now, there's a question here that about truth. Uh, and you'll see the second one going down. And I'm reminded of the movie uh, from several years ago, A Few Good Men. And there was this courtroom scene in that with uh, Tom Cruise as the attorney and Jack Nicholson as the uh, colonel at the base. And he was trying to get the truth out about what happened. And finally, uh, in an emotional set of outbursts, Jack Nicholson character said, you can't handle the truth and uh, in pushing it back in. One of the things to think about in this entire area is, can you handle the truth? Can you handle the truth of what's going on in your school? And we'll talk about that uh, in a moment from a social media perspective. But can you handle the truth about, are you ready? And how do you know? And are you sure? Are your plans at the level that they align with the standards and best practices? Is your board aware of that uh, and that level. Today we're in an environment where disaster denial is a key factor. It's not going to happen to me. I'm smarter than anybody else and hey, even if it happened, it's not going to be so bad. So as you think about your plans and think about your level of knowledge, are you really prepared to handle the truth that's associated with it? Now in general, who is planning a battle operation, and that's supposed to, the star that's on the slide is supposed to represent a general, would want to know where the enemy is located, uh, how many of them are there, which direction are they moving, uh, what's going on associated with them. Do they have tanks, do they have rocket launchers, in planning their battle plan. So as you think about your school, you're going to want to know what's going on within your school and, and what's occurring. Every day there's a school in crisis. There's a, a different uh, event that's happening. Given the number of schools in the United States, uh, both public and private, uh, K through 12, uh, daycare, uh, colleges, vocational schools, every day there's a school in crisis. It may not have happened to yours today, or it might not come together at this point, but the threats are real. They're there. And when we think about this, it's a, a crisis that begins to happen. Is an event that you really haven't looked at, that you haven't had a plan for, and therefore you can't control and mitigate. The story that I told you earlier about the school that was having a problem with a student with a threat, I said, well, tell me about your behavioral threat uh, risk assessment program. Well, we don't have one. Well, tell me about your crisis management plan, how you're going to make decisions and, and carry forward. We don't have one. Tell me how you're monitoring social media with the comments that are going out about that. We don't do that. So if you have an exam that don't have a, a plan associated with it, then you come to the point that it's a crisis. Our goal for you is that you have plans in place so that you'll be able to manage the events through without it ever arising to the level of a crisis. So beforehand, we work in a pre-action area. We are having our plans in place. We're training our staff and our faculty. We are um, getting the supplies in place to be ready. At the onset, then we're going to be faced with the emergency response. That's the uh, evacuation, the shelter in place, the lockout, the lockdown, uh, the life and health issues that are associated with it. And then finally, afterwards, we're going to have to deal with the consequences. So we're responding to a camp at this time uh, in the summer weeks. And, uh, there was um, an unfortunate series of events that happened, and a child predator uh, was on the property associated with it. And as the response now has come to deal with it, uh, it was uh, the person was stopped before uh, physical uh, events occurred, but yet you now have the trauma associated with it, and you're going to deal with that consequence for an extended period of time. So a crisis is really not school as usual. It's not business as usual. The crisis in business is unusual. It's not the way you run your school every single day to make these things happen and occur. So as you think about your school and why should you assess your plans, why should you start to identify all of the things we've talked about, the parents want to know that their children are safe. And one of the key questions that 
you should be thinking back is, are you sure? Could we survive a disaster or a disruption at our school? Um, where is it that we need to improve on our plan? How can we do a better job than we're currently doing? Uh, how are we making progress in getting uh, these things put into place? And do our plans align with standards and best practices? When you think about that, if in fact there was a problem at your school, and again our prayer is that that's not going to happen, you're going to be forced in a situation where people are going to say, well, did you have a process in place for that? Did you have a plan? Have you trained your people? Did you do a test to see that you would have the right steps that uh, could be done at the right time? If you didn't in any of those areas, then you're going to have to explain. And as a general rule in all of these areas, if you're explaining, you're losing. But worse than that is because you didn't have those things, Someone was hurt. Someone potentially could die. And that's the area that we want to focus on. So what should your priorities be? Where are the gaps? And are our key suppliers uh, prepared to fill into those elements? Now, what you should measure, you see the slide before was why you should measure. Now it's what is it should be that you should measure. We want to measure what we should be concerned about. The type of an assessment that we would do would be a vulnerability assessment. That's the what are the risks and hazards that are associated with our school and at our campus. Um, is there someone that's pushing preparedness within the organization? By the way, our recommendation that that's the board. The board has a fiduciary governance responsibility to see that these plans are in fact in place. Failure to plan can mean that uh, there's a potentially uh, a gap in your insurance coverage because if you fail to plan, you didn't use business judgment, and therefore potentially the coverages under your insurance policy could in fact be uh, avoided. So benchmarking, uh, looking at your operations, your performances, your processes, and your strategies, those are all things that we should be thinking about measuring. And we're going to give you a much more exhaustive list in, in just a few minutes. But this whole concept of assessment, I want to open it up for us to think about on a much broader basis. You should be seeing some circles open up on your um, monitor as you're watching this webinar today. And we call those crisis circles. And it doesn't matter if the crisis or the disruption hits the school directly or hits your people, your faculty, your staff, your students, or their homes, or your community, critical suppliers. It's going to have an impact on your school, and that's why we've got to make sure there are plans aligned to best standards and practices so that we're able to respond in each one of these areas. Now, every time you go to buy a stock or make an investment, uh, there's always a disclaimer, and that disclaimer says past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, people are trying to reduce their liability and their exposure. Uh, by saying, well, you promised me that I would get this particular return. But the fact that you haven't had a problem in your school, it is not indicative that there won't be a problem in the future. And so that's an important element to look at because just because it happened as of, hasn't happened as of today doesn't mean that it will have not happened tomorrow. At the RenWeb conference just a couple of weeks ago, we were talking with a school and it's a school located in a church. And for all of you that are listening that are in that area, that's a much more complex structure. Uh, members want access and controls. And the church really wasn't seeing the need that they needed to have all these plans in place. But a counseling session between the pastor and a family that was um, in a position of thinking about divorce and terminating a, a marriage, the uh, husband of the family went out to the car got his gun and came back in. And now you've got an armed intruder who's obviously emotionally upset on the campus and in the building with the students. And there was a lack of communications between the church and the school. And there was not a lockdown uh, event that occurred. This happened right at the end of the school year. And it was a particular trauma associated with it. So the fact they never had a problem before and you don't have a problem until you have a problem. We're okay, and then you're not okay. So 
think about that as an answer as the back to your board, back to your senior leaderships that said, well, we've never had a problem. I don't understand why, in fact, we need it. That's why doing an assessment will make a significant difference as we're coming forward. So as we think about it, we're worried about things of being foreseeable. And the flooding picture that you're seeing in that area, and by the way, across the country with the uh, weather that's happened this year, we've had an excessively large number of floods in those areas. But if this was your school located in this area, having a plan on how you're going to deal with it becomes very, very critical. So one of the assessments that we're going to talk about are what are the vulnerabilities and threats that your school is, in fact, associated with. And this is the first of a, a webinar series that we're going to be doing where we take each one of these assessments and go into them in greater detail, show, showing you exactly what you should focus on. So what, in fact, is foreseeable? We're in an environment today where everything is, in fact, foreseeable. And tomorrow, anyone may be held accountable. And that area of accountability becomes extremely critical as we think about things. Now, uh, most of you probably don't remember the 1993 bombing at the World Trade Center. That was the truck bomb that got into the garage below the building. And the terrorists uh, ended up uh, setting the bomb off. The towers didn't come down at that time. But there were two deaths. There were injuries. There was damage. And there was a criminal trial where the terrorist was found guilty and sentenced to jail. But there was also a civil trial where damages were awarded. And the damages, the jury awarded damages as follows. Twice the liability to the building owner and one-third of the liability to the terrorist. Besides saying great country, America, you think about the fact, well, why would a jury say that the people that owned the building were more liable than the person who tried to blow it up? And the rationale here is this was an identified vulnerability and threat, and there was an obligation to protect the tenants and the public in that building. That same obligation goes back to our schools. We're seeing from a regulatory standpoint, even under OSHA and a business environment, this failure to plan, this failure to have this area uh, in place could trigger liability either civilly or in some cases under OSHA criminally back to the organization. So the key here is what we've talked about in our other uh, webinars in the RenWeb Firestorm webinar series. It's predict, plan, perform. So as we think about that, that's what I'd like you to think about, that the assessing really helps us in the predicting area, the planning area, and the perform area. So as we go through this in more detail, let's think about the fact that there are warning signs that occur. And it's going to be our ability to recognize those warning signs and then act on them that will make a significant difference for us. And the reason we keep focusing this is that when you're prepared, you need to have the time to respond effectively. So the more that we can predict what would occur, the more that we can train our people, the more that we can exercise, then we'll be able to have the time when we need it the most. Now, in a business environment, and we think about it in the corporate world, You've heard the term business intelligence, and I clipped this off Wikipedia uh, to share today. But I'd like you to think about that in terms of our school uh, at this point in time. And as, hang on one second. Bill, there's a flashing note there, so somebody may be having an issue if you look at that. Uh, the business intelligence area is that there's a set of theories, methodologies, architectures, and technologies that transform raw data into meaningful and useful information for business analysis purposes. So there's a lot of information out there. Firms look at things called big data, where they try to analyze and see what's going on. Your assessments are going to be doing a similar thing for your school. It's going to help you interpret what's going on, identify opportunities to improve performance, uh, help create stability, and give you predictable views of what's going to be occurring next. So instead of thinking about business intelligence, let's think a little bit today about school intelligence. And our goals here are, are really to try to know today what we think is going to happen tomorrow within our school. And as we'll share in just a moment, the, one of the primary tools to do that is the monitoring of social media risk. 
that becomes your intelligence network to know what's going to be going on. Because what's being said today on social media has a direct impact of what's going to be done tomorrow uh, within your school and your area. Our goal is to follow the predict, plan, perform process, predict what the vulnerabilities and threats are, what are their impacts, how do we monitor and triggers, having the plans in place, having the training and exercising and testing and supplies under the perform, because that's part of what we want to assess, is our ability in each of those three dimensions within our school. So all of both of those combined, both the intelligence in the first line and the planning in the, uh, in the second, to try to transform this element of uncertainty into certainty. If this occurs, we're going to do that. If that occurs, we're going to do something else. And being aware of knowing when and how to act becomes an extremely critical element associated with it. And then the, the element finally is, what are the metrics? How are we going to know if, in fact, we did a good job? So that's our goal. So why do we want to conduct an, uh, an assessment? Simply to understand where we are and predict what's going to happen next. It's kind of like our report card, as you think about it. Everything builds on everything else. We, we want you to align to standards and best practices. Uh, they're, you, they're accepted best practices for a school preparedness plan. They're best practices for a behavioral threat risk assessment program. There's a best practice for a workplace violence plan. There's a best practice for social media risk monitoring. Then we want you to devise a plan or a strategy. In some cases, it's a strategy of how you're going to deal with things. There's that wonderful word of metrics to know how well you're doing at it. That comes back to benchmarking where you are relative to others in other schools around the country. Then find the gaps. You know, where are we out of alignment? And then we obviously have to fix those gaps. Identifying the risk is an area that we started with very early in the webinar series. You need to know what are the vulnerabilities and threats that our school is uh, facing. And then to be able to keep aware of those and for every vulnerability, know what we're going to monitor and know what the trigger is to activate our plan and have a plan in that area to carry forward. And finally, the reason that we want to assess is to support the decision process. Because remember the earlier quote that we talked about today, that a crisis is not business as unusual. It's business. A crisis is business as unusual, not business as usual. So as you think about that, that's an area of why you need a strong framework to come together and look at it. Now, I made a short list, and I think I've left some out. Uh, that's why the pluses are down at the bottom. The types of assessments that you can think about are a behavioral threat risk assessment. That's where we're working with a student who has a behavior of concern. In fact, I'll give you a little bit more insight into that in just a moment. And later, we'll do an entire session just on behavioral threat uh, risk assessment. Business continuity, how will our school operate if something happens to our facility? In a disaster or a crisis, uh, there are four areas that can be impacted. Our facility, our buildings, our campus, our people, our students and teachers, our data and information, or finally our brand and reputation, or a combination of those. So a continuity plan is certainly one of the elements that you'll want to have in place. A business impact analysis takes each one of your functions and says, within our school, if this function is not available, if it's impaired, what are the impacts on our school? What are the financial impacts? What are the operational impacts? What are the impacts on our students? What are the impacts on our faculty and staff and our parents associated with it? Those are all the aspects that we're looking at to be able to determine. A communicable illness uh, or pandemic plan analysis. The bioradar, who is the firm that tracks this, has forecast that swine flu will be back in the fall at pandemic levels within the United States. Those are elements that you need to see where is our plan relative to the standards and the best practices, um, the social distancing, distancing aspects, the cleaning aspects within our school, the supplies. Um, how would we run our school if suddenly we didn't have 30 or 40 percent of our faculty 
for our students. Uh, there are standards for crisis communications. And in fact, if this is an opportunity. Later this month, there will be a Firestorm uh, webinar focused around specifically crisis communication. We're doing a joint research project uh, with uh, the University of Louisville and the United States Army and Hootsuite in identifying to figure out what it is you need to say in your messages. What should you be communicating? And there's a research project going on that. And if you would like to participate from your school, we're going to be focusing specifically on what are parents and students need to know in a variety of crises and so you can tailor your messages more effectively. Emergency plans. Are your plans focused on how to do something or just simply what? Are your plans aligned to standards and best practices? Are you based upon evacuation, shelter in place, lockout and lockdown? Have you followed the I love you guys protocol? And it's, by the way, if you want to go to their website, it's iloveyouguys.org in that particular area. Preparedness, uh, Firestorm has a preparedness assessment. It's a facilitated self-assessment for schools, uh, looking at the eight dimensions that are required and approximately five data points in each of those areas to give you a better understanding of where you are from a preparedness standpoint. I'm going to share five of those questions out of that uh, list with you in just a few minutes. Uh, security, uh, looking at how secure is our campus? Are we do we have a fence? Do we have video cameras? Do we have uh, is the outside of our building locked? Do we have uh, classrooms that lock from the inside? The standard, uh, by the way, is that all classrooms need to lock from the inside and should be locked while class is in session. Uh, social media risk is the fastest growing risk that schools are faced today. It becomes your intelligence network to know where you are and what's going on in those individual areas. The vulnerability threat assessment that we talked about just a few minutes ago, and it really talks about understanding all the vulnerabilities and threats, both the natural disasters and others that would affect your school and workplace violence. Uh, at the RimWeb conference, we heard several stories of domestic violence coming into the workplace. And your school is a workplace for your faculty and staff. And uh, the spouse would know when that employee starts, when they get off, where they are, and we're seeing those violence and coming in. We could have had a, a, a large number of other assessments uh, within the process that you can do, but we wanted to at least start this list. We'll be going into more depth in several of these in the coming months. So the threats and risk are out there. The behavioral threat risk area is one that you need to focus on within your school. Our goal is to intervene before that gun goes into that backpack. It's not about arming teachers. It's not about trying to have a, a diamond force uh, responsibility response to a shooting where the police come directly in into those areas. It's, it's exercising involvement when there's a behavior of concern before it, it elevates itself to threatening behavior, before it elevates itself to physical violence, and before it elevates up to death. Um, the situation we're handling this week, it's still involved in uh, behaviors of concern. We have not yet had an act of violence. And that's an, an extremely uh, important aspect to think about. As you think about behavioral threat risk assessment, there has to be an awareness program. There has to be reporting. Anonymous reporting plays a critical role in that particular area. There has to be an, an, an impact assessment process. It could start out with a screening, it's been an investigation, and ultimately an impact assessment that may well involve a third party uh, incoming involved, like a forensic psychologist. A case management program to be able to follow that student. If you have a student who is a ri at a risk to others in the ninth grade, you need to follow them for the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, and the twelfth grades. So this is a process that you need to have integrated within your school. It's a different type of an assessment. And then the monitoring of behavior ongoing associated with those students that are identified. 
Now, the picture you see on your screen now, if you were walking down the hallway in your school and you saw this episode that was occurring, you would immediately intervene. We talked with a lot of schools again at the RenWeb meeting last week, and uh, unanimously everybody said we would immediately jump into that area. And when you think about that aspect, that's happening in schools, but it's happening every day on social media. And the place to see that is not in the hallway where it's already occurred. The place to see it is on social media, where the information that's in the public domain. And so monitoring is a key area for threat identification. And we'll do a separate webinar around social media risk monitoring and explaining that uh, a little bit later in the year. But social media risk monitoring is your intelligence network for your school. It's where you're going to find out what's going on. Again, the problems in your school are on social media today, and they're in the school tomorrow. The statistics are quite startling. 80% of the time when someone has ill intent or a potential violence behavior, threatening behavior, there is at least one other person in your school that's aware. 66% of the time, two or more people are aware, and when they're aware, they're talking about it on social media. We gave a lot of examples at the conference and showed uh, some of the things that were uncovered. Uh, and I think the story maybe to share with you if you were not there is at least this one. We search for schools and do the monitoring for a large number of them. And one of the things that we continually look at is the term school and gun. And in a school year, that's mentioned 60 times a year, uh, 60 times a day uh, throughout the school year. And that's a particular concern. And, and so late in the uh, end of the school year this year, uh, Karen uh, Mazua, who's our EVP for social media risk, saw a picture of a young man holding a gun in class with a picture taken by another student and multiple students posting tweets about it occurring within their school. And the picture was particularly disturbing because you could see other students around the young man with the gun. And so Karen started doing research from the listing that was associated with it. And she identified the name of a teacher. A little bit more research came up with the word calculus. And so she thought, oh, teacher, calculus, math teacher, and did research for that and found that this was a school in North Carolina. When she contacted the head of the school and said, I don't know if this picture is real or, or fake, but I thought you would want to know that it was occurring in your school. And, uh, she was thanked uh, and, uh, by the head of school. And then they, did, they dealt with the young man with a gun. And the thing that upset the head of school the most was that all of those students knew about it, and no one had come forward to say that the young man had a gun in school that day. This information is on social media. It's information about drugs, it's information about guns, it's information about uh, students that are viewing uh, the opportunity to commit suicide. That information is there. And so how you respond to it, how you deal with those things can make a significant difference. And this is an area that I'd like you to concentrate on for this coming school year. Social media risk is, in fact, the fastest growing risk that you're facing. So as we come out of that, we think about why. Why do we need to take whatever we need to do? Why do we need to communicate in each of these areas? And this is another opportunity to assess. Uh, we're responding, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, to a camp uh, that's a religious camp in there in session this summer. And that's where the uh, scenario came up with uh, the uh, child molester and being there and approaching a student on the campus. And, so they uh, talked to the media. They started telling them about what they'd done and put in place. They set up a town hall meet, a town hall program, and a series of events. And you might think, well, that's good. They're trying to get out and get in front of this. But the key is you know how to talk to your parents and your students directly. You don't need to talk to them through a third party. If you had to send a letter to your parents, you could. If you need to pick up the phone and call them, you could. You don't need to talk to them through the action news. So a quick test that I would like you to do, a quick assessment in this area, 
is if you find yourself in a crisis and you're having to deal with it, is ask why you're going to communicate. Stop. Ask that why. And where, how will this help if I do that? And is there a better way? So when you're always thinking about a crisis communication strategy, identify the why. Go back to the predict, plan, perform that we've talked about. Discuss what will happen next. Uh, do a plan. It could be a, a strategy as the next step if you don't have it in place. Identify what you need to do and what you need to say. If you find yourself ever in a crisis and you're trying to assess what the next steps are, focus on what is it that you know. Are you concerned? If so, what are you concerned about? What's your strategy? What's your plan? What are you going to monitor? What are you going to communicate to whom and how? And what's going to happen next? So that quick test gives you a Should be a back up from that standpoint. We really hope. I apologize for the uh, the confusion, and I see that some hands are raised. Let me go back. Is it back up? It's back up. Good. We'll back up. Let me go back here. Everybody, I apologize. Excitement of live broadcast. Is it a live broadcast? All right. So you would have a policy framework. You would be planning in each of these areas of what you're going to uh, do within the program. I want to show you five sample questions. Um, think about these. These are just a, a, a random sample that I pulled out of what's available to understand about it. And when you look at these types of questions, it's going to be very important for you to think about, do you match everything here? So question number one that I would like you to think about is, does your school have an established preparedness program? That includes risk assessment, planning, training, testing, maintenance, and annual review of your plan. If you have, if you can't answer yes to all of those, then you don't have a, an established preparedness program. You've got some of those that somewhat, if you don't have any, it's a no. Second question, is your school leadership committed to a culture of preparedness which is evidenced in a written policy statement or board resolution. If your board hasn't done that, then there's no documentation that they're committed. That becomes very important so that you get the support for the planning. You get the support financially within your school, and it's a way to get the board more engaged. Third, have you conducted a comprehensive risk assessment which identifies the threats to which your school is vulnerable, natural disasters, for example, weather, communicable illness, uh, sex abuse, non-custodial parents, violence, bullying, suicide, cyber threats, et cetera. So if you haven't identified all of those areas, then you haven't had a comprehensive risk assessment. I would encourage you to have your local sheriff or police come and do a tour of your campus. They will identify certain areas. But they're going to be looking at physical security areas as opposed to all of the threats and risks that you have within those areas. Four, does your school have a comprehensive workplace violence prevention program for the faculty and staff that includes policies pertaining to how we hire and discipline and terminate, sexual harassment, hostile environment, reporting, investigation, intervention, action plans, and monitoring? Your school is a workplace. OSHA is identified Workplace violence is a known hazard. You're required to have a plan in place. In the business world, 70% of the of businesses don't, in fact, have a workplace violence program. Here's an opportunity for you to align. And as we shared with you just a few minutes ago, we're seeing domestic violence move into the school workplace. And the last one to provide you with some thoughts to focus on is, does your school have a documented behavioral risk assessment process? with a designated trained, emphasis on the word trained, 
multidisciplinary team. You might have someone from the administration. You might have someone from your counseling department. Uh, someone either security or academics that are involved, which would investigate the report, screen the subject, develop an action plan, and monitor the behavior of the subject who existed, exhibited these behaviors of concern. So looking at these five elements associated with it becomes very critical within your uh, school as we've gone forward. These are a sample of the questions. So if your assessment of your plans hasn't addressed this level of detail, then you have some doubt about where you rank relative to other schools and procedures. This is an opportunity for you to bring your program in to alive. A reason to do all the assessments that we've talked about, from an academic standpoint, you want your school to excel. Uh, I regularly see where we had so many graduates uh, go to these colleges and put it in, putting that into perspective and move on to successful careers. We want you to have that same element of success from a preparedness standpoint within your school. So if you would like an assessment done, contact us. We'll try to reach out to everyone on the webinar today and see if we can help in that area. Ren Webb is underwriting the cost of that, so that's a $2,500 value. It won't cost your school any money. Just contact us at Firestorm, mention Ren Webb, and in fact, it will happen. So that's where starting and getting the Simplifying Preparedness Program in place really began. So our thanks to Rune Web for underwriting this webinar series and providing you with some information about where the threats are and involvement. For those of you who didn't make it to the user conference in Atlanta, I would encourage you to put it on your calendar for next summer. It's going to be in San Antonio, Texas, and it's an exciting place to go. But the real key here is it's an opportunity to learn more. Learn more about how the RenWeb system can help your school, but learn more about what the policies and procedures and, uh, that need to be in place in your school, to network with your peers, to talk with other schools that are boarding schools, if you're one, to talk to other schools that are, uh, that are schools within churches, uh, to talk with schools that face unique threats that are in the area. So here's an opportunity for you to learn in a very quick manner. Uh, if you would like to listen to this webinar again or to share it with others within your school, you can go to firestorm.com and uh, there will be a link there so that it could be viewed uh, on demand at your convenience. If you've got questions or would like more information, you can contact us at webinars at firestorm.com. Drop us an email. We would love to hear. Or pick up the phone and give us a call at 800-321-2219. I know that many of you are enjoying the summer and getting ready for the return of school. And uh, as I look ahead in the calendar, it's only just a, a few weeks away. Uh, here in the Atlanta area, uh, our schools are starting in the first week of August. So summer vacation, I think, gets shorter each and every year. But now is the time to make that investment in your school. Now is the time to make that investment in your students and in your faculty and your staff. Assessing where you are relative to where you need to be and knowing it and developing a plan that becomes critical. This is, in fact, a continuous improvement process. Uh, I felt underscored at the meeting in Atlanta with, with all of the schools. Uh, some 630 people were in attendance. It was a chance to see what you're doing for our students. I'd like to thank you for everything that you do every day. That concludes our webinar. Have a wonderful summer and enjoy uh, your time. We look forward to talking with you again next month as we continue this series and we'll go more in depth into each of the categories. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Bill. Goodbye.